Is your wallet a little lighter than usual after the holiday season? Consider it money well spent, because you deserve to live your best life. And Chime wants to help you live yours to the fullest. A little extra money goes a long way, which is why the Chime checking account has tons of benefits that millions of members love. Like fee-free overdraft up to $200 for eligible members, no monthly fees, and access to over 60,000 easy-to-find and fee-free ATMs. You even get paid up to two days early with direct deposit, all while managing your money on the go, including sending and receiving money fee-free with friends that aren't even on Chime. Sign up for Chime today for you and your wallet. Get started at Chime.com slash Goals24. That's Chime.com slash Goals24. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Stride Bank N.A. members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Access to direct deposits up to two days early depends on the timing of the submission of the payment file from the payer. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl podcast. I am your host, Kristen. Last week, we left off with the affable, the adorable, the utterly irresistible Nobby of North Carolina. But all good things must come to an end. The Minerva Monster, also known as the Ohio Grassman, named for the odd structural dens and nests it builds out of tall grass, and also its diet, which also consists of tall grass from fields. This hairy dude is known to be kind of a prick. This creature very well could be just peaceful and trying to mind its own business, but if the details in its legend are true... It is suspected that it stalked the same family who claimed to see the creature numerous times, including at one point getting close enough to stare at them through their kitchen window. It's also suspected the creature killed their dog days before the family would witness the grassman for the first time, which is awful. There have been many sightings of uh, a singular grassman, but there have also been multiple seen at once. The creature in these various sightings has ranged in height from 5 to 10 feet, but is generally around the 7-foot mark. Its footprints measure 10 to 20 inches long. It weighs generally in the 300 to 500-pound range. It smells of rotted things and can leave its stench to linger in an area for days afterward. It's said to be blackish-brown, have very long arms, look like a gorilla but taller and standing straighter, has pretty long hair, and luminous orange eyes, lending to its other moniker, orange eyes. Old orange eyes. All right. So our next local critter is theorized to be possibly be some subspecies of Bigfoot because the shoe doesn't exactly fit, but it kind of does. The wood devil of New Hampshire is a very tall bipedal creature covered in gray fur and described having an ape-like face. It is very elusive, incredibly nimble. It uses the trees of the forest to hide behind them until the coast is clear. If there are no trees to hide behind, the creature will stand perfectly still. And you might miss him, even if you're looking right at him, because the wood devil is incredibly thin. Painfully thin. There are reports of sightings of this creature in the 1900s. And in modern times, it was reported as recently as 2004. Following the sighting, the folks involved took measurements of its tracks. The tracks were 15 inches long with a stride anywhere from 4 to 6 feet. Now, being painfully thin is not a trait associated with Sasquatch. However, if we're 
speculatively theorizing here, I would say the same thing about a bear. You ever seen pictures or video of starving bears, bears with mange? It's very sad, but it happens. And they can look like a completely different animal. And if we are saying that Sasquatch is an animal, just like any other animal, this thing can get sick or have trouble finding food, too. I'll leave that one up to you guys. Uh, still very interesting Bigfootish local lore to be aware of. The Albatwitch is a short little apple stealing thief of Columbia, Pennsylvania. Many people over the centuries have claimed to see these very short, hairy, bipedal creatures roaming the woods in the area, specifically near Chickie's Rock. Legend says that the natives who used to call Chickie's Rock home knew of these creatures and even had depictions of them on their war shields. In the 1800s, the story goes, picnickers at Chickie's Rock would be terrorized by albatwitches who dwelled in the trees. The creatures would then steal apples from the scene. The name Albatwitch is thought to be a corruption of Pennsylvanian Dutch for apple snitch or apple witch. Before we proceed, support for the Paranorm Girl podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Santa baby, the season for a fresh cut is here. With the sponsors of today's show, Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming have just launched their fifth-generation lawnmower to help you avoid another silent night in the bedroom this year. Take care of your special snowflake with Manscaped and watch your South Pole shine like never before. Get the best stocking stuffer of all by going to manscaped.com and using code PNG for 20% off plus free shipping. Mrs. Claus will thank you. Men, we all know one. If you have one in your life that you find is especially difficult to shop for during the Christmas season, might I recommend Manscaped? <laughs> there is no need to do the guessing game this year. Trust that they will appreciate the tailored approach with the selection of gifts at your disposal. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Seriously, awesome little trimmer. It doesn't just look good, doesn't just give the shave of their choosing. It also helps reduce nicks and cuts to Santa's sack if you catch my snow drift. You got a fella in your life with some wicked nose hairs? Never fear. The Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer are here. Ooh, here's a good one. I just had a boxer discussion with my sister last week. We were discussing weak boxer game. Now, I know for a fact Lee's boxer game is on point because I just got him a three-pack of the Manscapes Boxers 2.0. Were you aware these boxers feature their signature jewel pouch that keeps Santa's presence calm, cool, and collected? And there's some sharp-looking undergarments, and they are so soft to the touch. Check your list off as quickly as Santa shoots down a dang chimney and get 20% off and free shipping with code PNG at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code PNG. Say ho, ho, ho to a well-groomed mistletoe with Manscaped. Yo, Tennessee has got some wild cryptid lore. Real quick, though, I wanted to give a nod to something called the Tennessee Wild Man, who has been seen roaming McNary County, Tennessee. In every respect, its description is that of Bigfoot. It is also said to have a scream that could freeze a man's blood, and it mostly targeted women though none of its attacks were ever successful. The other creature I want to highlight is called the Flintville Monster. This thing is not nice. It wakes up and chooses violence every day. An article penned April 6, 1997 by E. Randall Floyd was titled, Tennessee Bigfoot, A Disagreeable Fellow. 
a poetic way to put it if the stories he reported in the article are true. This creature lurks around Flintville, Tennessee, tormenting and attacking folks and trying to steal children. It stands seven feet tall, smells like a skunk, and leaves behind 16-inch footprints. Close calls reported by residents include being chased through the woods as it howled and screeched behind them. A woman locked herself in her car and hid as this thing attacked her vehicle. Describing it as a giant hairy monster, she said that it broke off her car's antenna and then jumped up and down on the roof while she lay frightened and flattened against the floorboard. Several attacks were reported in the 80s. A plumber said it had smashed in his truck's windshield. A pastor said that it had also destroyed his windshield and broke his antenna. A housewife reported a black, hairy creature had chased her inside her home and beat on the door. One of the most famous accounts of this thing took place in the 70s, uh, when a mother claimed to see a large man-like apey thing running across her yard full steam ahead directly toward her four-year-old son. Now she intercepted it with seconds to spare and ran back in the house with her kid and called the police. By the time they arrived, there was nothing to be found but its enormous footprints and some drops of blood. Ooh. Ooh. Of all the states I will have covered in these American Sasquatch episodes, none surprised me more than Texas for being the hotbed of Bigfoot activity and lore for these creatures. Texas! Who would have thought? Let's start with uh, Eastern Texas, uh, which less surprisingly is more of a fit for Sasquatch territory, for two and a half centuries but we can probably safely assume more. Residents of eastern Texas have reported sightings of a giant, hefty, hairy creature matching the description of Bigfoot. The Caddo Indians spoke of tribes of hair-covered giants. Settlers told tales of wild men. Hundreds of sightings and encounters have taken place in and around the forests of eastern Texas, and folks in the modern day are still running into something out there. Caddo Lake has been named a land of Bigfoot by Texas Bigfoot Research Conservancy's Craig Woolheater. Just 18 miles northwest of Caddo Lake, the city of Jefferson, which hosts the annual Texas Bigfoot Conference, has been called the Bigfoot capital of Texas by former mayor Carrie Heaster Jr. This area is happening for this creature. And if Caddo Lake is sounding familiar to you, you might recall just how close it is to the southwest corner of Arkansas's Miller County and its legendary creature and flap of sightings. Now, though eastern Texas seems like the place to be, I learned of a really interesting flap that took place in the 60s and 70s in western Texas that I wanted to share with you guys today. The following information is from an incredible blog post by Michael Mays. His research and this connection is just, it's outstanding, just so, so well done. He is also an author of a few cryptid books uh, that look really good. I am linking this uh, below and uh, just going to give you the highlights today because you you really need to go read his full post. You, you just gotta. So <clears throat> to avoid any confusion, this is the story of the Caddo Critter out of Caddo, Texas in West Texas. It is also the story of the Holly Him out of Holly and the Haskell Rascal out of Haskell. It began in Caddo in 1964 when an unidentified critter began popping up in the area. The original sighting was by a man named Charles Gant, who claimed to have fired multiple shots at something he said looked like a gorilla. Multiple residents would see this thing and describe the same thing about it. It was seven feet tall, four feet wide, and covered in hair. After this first sighting came uh, to light, other folks began admitting that, yeah, 
we've been seeing this thing for like the last two weeks, actually. And this set Caddo into full on Caddo critter mania mode. Everyone got locked and loaded. Every yard was lit to the hilt after dark. Folks were staying up to keep watch. This went on for a while, and then as quickly as it started, the sightings ceased. Though theories abounded as to what it could have been that the witnesses actually saw, no final conclusion was reached as to what it was or what happened, and Caddo residents began to move on with their life. Meanwhile, 70 miles northwest of Caddo, residents of Haskell began to put two and two together that perhaps the thing that had just caused the uproar down there was the same thing that they had been seeing for years. Claims of sightings of the Haskell Rascal dated back 80 years in their area. In 1977, a similar-sounding creature surfaced south of Haskell and west of Caddo in the town of Holly. This creature was dubbed the Holly Hymn. The first sighting took place when two teenage boys eating lunch heard branches and twigs breaking and then were pelted with rocks originating from within the brush. And then they saw something. One of them would say, quote, Whatever it was, he looked like an ape, but still a man. He had huge arms. They hung down to his knees. You'd have to see him to believe it. The boys would flee, but return a little later with a gun and attempt to shoot the thing that was still there upon their return. They missed, but the shot would startle the creature enough to disappear back into the brush. Following this event, um, some interesting tracks were discovered that contained only four toes, and it looked like whatever it was walked only on the balls of its feet. Strange. The stride lengths between tracks were estimated at four feet. A reward of $5,000 would be posted for the capture of the Holly Hem. Nothing would come of it, and the sightings would ultimately die down. You know, perhaps the uh, the critter rascal and him were the same creature, and it was already roaming between 40 to 80 miles to reach all the corners of its territory. You know, what's to say it didn't just decide to simply move on or widen its territory or just grew smart to these weird boomsticks that go boom and got busy hiding? I don't know. Welcome to the future of legal THC, Moods THCA Flower. It's the most potent breakthrough in the world of federally legal cannabis. And now you have 10 high inducing strains of this smokable flower to choose from at hellomood.com, the best online dispensary that ships discreetly to your door. Great for beginner and veteran users, the experts at Mood have tailored different strains for curated moods. From euphoric and energized to creative and focused, Mood delivers the highest quality THC products you can trust. However you like to take THC, Mood enhances awe-inspiring experiences with versatile products that go with whatever mood you're ready for, like their great-tasting gummies, convenient pre-rolls, classic flower, and so much more. Try Mood's new THCA flower today, and for 20% off your first order, plus a free pre-roll of THCA flower, go to hellomood.com and use promo code PODCAST20. That's hellomood.com, promo code PODCAST20 for 20% off your order and a free THCA pre-roll. New year, new credit scores. Chime makes it easier to build credit by using your own money to make on-time payments with a secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Use it everywhere Visa credit cards are accepted. To apply, just open a Chime checking account with a qualifying direct deposit. There's no annual fee or credit check required when applying. Get started at Chime.com slash build. That's Chime.com slash build. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Stride Bank N.A. members FDIC. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Norton, Virginia is all about their wood booger. Before I launch into it, however, I want to shout out Matt Squatch Presents over on YouTube. I fell into this wood booger rabbit hole, and I stumbled upon Mr. Matt Squatch, who introduced me to a brand new concept that kind of sort of makes a lot of sense. Despite what you may think, I actually have an abundantly OCD analytical 
particular kind of brain that prefers to sort and categorize things in order to understand. It helps me to put things in boxes. That's probably why I love to see patterns so much when it comes to the paranormal and otherwise strange. So Matt Squatch here introduced me to a typing system when it comes to Bigfoot that I rather enjoy. Type 1 and Type 2. That's it. Your Type 1s are going to be primarily what you're seeing in the Pacific Northwest. In general, they are larger, taller, more human than ape, perhaps a more peaceful temperament, less aggressive. They just want to be left alone. Type 2 <laughs> can primarily be found in the South. This is your skunk ape. This is your Mogion monster. They are generally going to be smaller, a bit more primal and ape-like, a bit more aggressive. If the Bigfoot of the Northwest is a gorilla, the Bigfoot of the South is a chimp. <laughs> Both apes, similar features, many differences in behaviors, temperaments, some of their physical features, levels of aggression, etc., etc. I don't know if there's anything to it, but it does make sense to me. And I am curious if any of my Sasquatch listeners out there have ever heard of this system before. Why uh, Why you holding back? Why you ain't telling me? Anyhow, the Virginia wood booger would be considered a type 2 Bigfoot. The creature, at least in southwest Virginia, is described as bulky, humanoid, seven to eight feet tall with brown or black fur. It really came into popularity after finding Bigfoot uh, came for uh, an episode due to a video that you can find on YouTube yourself. It is titled The Beast of Gum Hill. It is a really interesting video, you guys. An early newspaper reference to it, published November 24th, 1892, stated that the name Woodbooger was perhaps derived from the boogeyman because it was rumored to carry off children who wandered too far. But Norton specifically has taken up the Woodbooger torch with many fun tributes to the creature, such as the following. The annual Woodbooger Festival provides guided tours where people can actually search for it. A statue of a Woodbooger was erected following the Finding Bigfoot team's visit at the Flag Rock Overlook, which was designated a Woodbooger Sanctuary. You can enjoy some tasty morsels at the Woodbooger Bar and Grill, and every September they hold the Woodbooger Geo Trail, which is a geocaching event held in the Flag Rock Recreation Area and also surrounding communities. Sounds like nobody embraces their boogers, quite like Southwest Virginia. The final Bigfoot exploration for today brings us back to where we started the Pacific Northwest. Washington State, baby. A state that boasts the highest number of sightings on record compared to any other state. A state that goes hand in hand with the Sasquatch. The state with some of the earliest explosively weird reports of encounters such as Ape Canyon and Albert Ostman. Instead of pinpointing any one county's local creature, I thought Another way to really highlight just how real this creature can be for folks would be fun. Here is some fun Bigfoot trivia from Washington. Skamania County is not the only location that took Bigfoot seriously enough to implement some rules for the sake of our state's beloved cryptid. Whatcom County declared itself a Sasquatch Protection and Refuge Area with Resolution Number 92-043. Whereas legend, purported recent findings, and spore suggest that Bigfoot may exist. And whereas, if such a creature exists, it is inadequately protected and in danger of death or injury. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Whatcom County Council that Whatcom County is hereby declared a Sasquatch Protection and Refuge Area, and all citizens are asked to recognize said status. 
Be it further resolved, this resolution shall be effective immediately. And this bill was approved and signed by Council Chair Daniel Warner, June 9th, 1991. Resolution number 2022-037 adopted similar language and resolved to also make Grays Harbor County a protection and refuge area for Sasquatch and was signed rather recently on April 5th, 2022. Another bill that was proposed was SB 5816 for 2017 2018, which would recognize the Sasquatch as the official cryptid of Washington, dudes. Ugh. Section 1 The legislature recognizes that Sasquatch has made immeasurable contributions to Washington State's cultural heritage and ecosystem. The state of Washington further recognizes the importance of preserving the legacy of Sasquatch. And Section 2, the species of cryptid commonly called Sasquatch, or Bigfoot, or Forest Yeti, is hereby designated as the official cryptid of the state of Washington. Now, unfortunately, this bill did not pass. Ugh, I know, right? It looks like they did try to reintroduce it for 2019, 2020, but there the trail goes cold. Personally, as someone who has the OG Sasquatch as my own personal local legend, I think that ish needs to be rectified, yo. Pronto. That will be a wrap on our exploration of Bigfoot and Sasquatch and Forest Yeti across the nation. I hope you heard some new information from either today's or last week's episode, and I hope your curiosity has been further piqued. We will be doing something very similar for Sasquatch around the world. Just as we have made clear today, this not being simply a Northwest phenomenon, it similarly is not just an American one. Peeps be seeing these things everywhere, man. That is a wrap on today's show. Join me for a final note. As weird and impossible as some of these local Bigfoot may be, as exaggerated as some of the details seem, it still confirms that almost every area in the U.S. has their very own version of Bigfoot. This should quite simply astound. What's more astounding, almost all of these areas' modern-day version is preceded by that of the natives who lived there. And though the details that have been reported can vary in one way or another, there is still a through line to these descriptions. I can ask you to picture a Sasquatch, and you can picture a Sasquatch, right? Do you automatically think glowing red eyes or six fingers? No. You think of a very large, hair-covered creature that walks on two feet and stinks to high heaven. A giant monkey man with no neck. An intelligent manimal that leaves behind human-like footprints. This is Sasquatch. The rest may be exaggerated and elaborated, but the through line here is that folks everywhere are seeing something that they have no business seeing that fits the profile. And if that blows your mind, just wait until we take this exploration worldwide in remote countries with no pop culture or TV, just sightings and a legend of what folks had already been seeing for years. The last little nugget that I wanted to leave you with today, since we talked quite a bit about specific names, is a list of general names we Americans have given to describe the thing hiding in the woods. <laughs> I just thought this was fun and interesting. So if you are tired of calling it either Bigfoot or Sasquatch, you wanna branch out here are a few others for your repertoire. Bush ape, American ape, wood ape, North American wood ape, 
wild men, ape men, monkey men, bush men, brush men, tree men, stink man, skunk demon, devil monkey, forest devil, forest giant, booger, woolly booger, wood booger, yellers, stinky boo, and the hairy stinkaboo. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's show, please rate five stars, like and follow on the socials at Paranorm Girl Pod. Please subscribe if you are watching this on YouTube. Your support in all of these ways means so much to me. I just seriously appreciate it. Uh, I will be announcing next week a really, really cool Christmas giveaway not even playing with you. I am going to wait until next week's episode to announce what it is and how you can get it, but I'll give you a hint. <clears throat> it rhymes with can-taped, pan-gaped, fan-vaped. <laughs> no, I'm not stroking out here. <laughs> it's just really awesome, and I am very excited for you, so stay tuned. I will see you guys next week for another fabulous guest conversation with host of the longtime running paranormal talk radio show, Nocturnal Frequency Radio, the one, the only, Mr. Steve Janier. I'll see you guys back here on Tuesday. Stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open.